Welcome back to another video and happy new year guys. Welcome to 2020. I've been gone. I know, I know. Okay. So here we go. Let's get started with a brand new video, the first video for the new year. And what an appropriate title to call this video than how to swim in 2020, okay? Cuz uh some of you probably haven't even started yet or you're interested in learning how to swim. And you've been holding it off for a while and uh, now it's time to jump in and try it out. If you prefer the written version of this, check out the blog article on my website, 7dayswim.co. You can read it along if you like. There are so many ways to skin a cat when it comes to learning how to swim. But first, let's talk about what to expect in the new year, particularly now that it's January. So first of all, you are probably thinking right now of losing weight and getting in shape. Like a lot of people who start off the new year, what happens usually is a lot of people sign up for gyms in January. So you can tell that January is the worst time to work out in gyms anywhere in the world because it's just flooded with newbies, people who signed up. What I'm proposing is to try something different than everyone else. Like I said, gyms are packed in January, but pools are not. Pools are usually packed in the summertime, you know, when the the weather gets really hot and bright and sunny and people want to go to the beach and uh, yeah, get in the water and cool off. That's when uh, pools are so packed. Summertime is the worst time to start learning how to swim, actually. The best time to learn how to swim is when there's the least amount of competition at the pool. And the least amount of competition is when the weather's cold, right, right now in wintertime. I say this to a lot of people, and a lot of people don't really think about this. You know, they say like, um, yeah, I've never really thought about swimming in the wintertime. But think about it. In the wintertime, which is easier to perform, running outside or swimming in an indoor pool that's heated? When you think about it, uh, I've tried both. Running outside in the wintertime when it's snowing and cold and raining and freezing and dark, it's not fun. Compared to swimming in an indoor pool where the, the environment's controlled and the temperature's always warm and uh, there's not a lot of people in the lanes. So if I were you, I would get started swimming now. Skip that gym membership that you're planning on signing up for right now and instead sign up for a pool or a community pass and just start practicing now when there's very little competition. You know, when it's summertime, it's too late to get started, in my opinion. They're thinking the same thing as you. There's just too much competition. The pools are overcrowded. Just There's too many people in the water that you're competing with. And it, swimming becomes really stressful for someone who's new. So go when the pool is quiet. And right now, the pool is quiet. Anywhere you go where the weather is cold. Uh, a lot of you think that, you know, when the weather's hot, you can just jump in the water, start swimming from one end of the pool to the other, and it's easy as that. But it's so completely the opposite for most beginners, okay, based on my experience. Students that I've taught, swimming is very stressful. It's complicated. It's confusing. What do beginners do? They sign up for swimming lessons at their local pool, okay, because that's the only source that they, they know of to learn. And local pools make it a real hassle for you to learn. The, the actual truth is most pools don't really want you to learn how to swim. They want to keep you hooked on as long as possible for you to keep signing up again and again and again. And the, the lessons are cheap, but the, the lessons are really poor quality, overcrowded, not enough attention. You don't really get results. There's no other option, but there are other options for you. So before I get into those options, let me talk about stages when it comes to swimming, okay? So we can call this like swimming in a nutshell, whether you're a complete beginner to advanced, there are three stages to every swimmer. And the first stage is comfort, second stage is movement, and the third stage is endurance. Okay, that's it. Comfort, move it, movement, and endurance. That's it. First stage is when you have, you're you new to the water, you have to get oriented, be comfortable being underwater, submerged, your head underneath the water. And uh, yeah, for a lot of people, it's just like entering a new planet. They don't know how to work with the water. And usually they fight back. And when you fight back, that's when you lose. Okay, so the only way that you can work with the water is by letting the water take control of you. Okay, working with the water. How do you work with the water? Well, you be comfortable. How do you be comfortable? Well, you have to relax your muscles. How do you relax your muscles? You first focus on breathing. Okay, breathing is the foundation to swimming. It's not your strokes, it's breathing. Okay, whoever tells you that freestyle or front crawl is a foundation of swimming no that's bullshit it's comfort it's breathing a lot of newbies they get this wrong you know they think that they just can just jump in the water start 
pedaling their arms, head up, you know, and they think they can cheat the water, but they can't. Okay, and I've seen it time and time and again. I've seen so many people try to cheat, cut corners, you know, skip the stage one. And it never works out in the long term, okay? It's such a short-term solution. If you swim like once a year and when it's summertime and when the weather's only hot, you can get by on this. But if you're going to dedicate your life to, or a good chunk of your life towards being healthy and staying fit, keeping fit by using swimming as a conduit, then you need to master stage one first. And that stage is comfort, okay? You got to breathe. And you got to control it. You got to balance it. And it's hard blowing bubbles. It's hard stopping the nose water from getting up your nose. It's hard choking on water. But we all have to go through this stage in the beginning. Okay, you can't cut this stage out. So that's stage one. Stage two is where we move from comfort to movement. Okay, and that's when we get into strokes. Okay, so swimming lessons, they introduce you to front crawl, aka freestyle, back crawl, backstroke breaststroke, butterfly, okay? The four main strokes that, you know, every swimmer knows or has to learn. And then there's also other components such as like treading water, diving, flip turns, and open water, swimming adaptation. You got a lot on your plate to learn. Each stroke is like a completely different language that you have to learn. And most swimming lessons, they they, they throw all four languages at you at the same time to learn, <laughs> okay? So you got a lot on your plate. That's why it takes years for people to master all four languages or four strokes and to me that's bullshit because you don't really need to learn all four strokes you only need what works for you same thing goes with like treading water diving flip turns up open water swimming you don't need all of these components but if you have mastered all of these components like i have you can call yourself a competent swimmer like you've graduated from the school of swimming but not many people do actually a lot of people don't finish or complete stage two and then just casually skip to stage three. And this is where you can separate the good swimmers or the competent swimmers to the incompetent swimmers at your local pool. So wherever I go, wherever I swim around the world, I can tell who are amateurs and who are professionals. The professionals are the ones that have completed stage two. They've done their homework. They've probably spent years training every day focusing on refining their skills and it shows when they swim i would say probably like 10 percent of the population 10 percent of the population at any pool i i enter around the world has completed stage two 70 80 maybe 90 percent completion of stage two so for example i will see a swimmer that knows how to front crawl but doesn't know how to breaststroke that means they didn't complete stage two Maybe I've seen a swimmer that can tread water but doesn't know how to perform a backstroke or basic backstroke. That means they haven't completed stage two. They didn't do all the work involved. And that's fine. A lot of people don't really want to be like a, a complete swimmer overall. But uh, yeah, if uh, you haven't really mastered at least one stroke, whatever stroke that is, like front crawl, back crawl, whatever, whatever stroke, if you haven't mastered at least one stroke, then I would say that you didn't really do your homework and you're not ready for this stage three, this final stage. Stage three is endurance. You can either put everything that you've learned and focus on speed or you can focus on distance or you can focus on both, okay? So this is the part where, yeah, you can totally mix it up, play with your swimming and set goals for yourself. So some people become competitive swimmers, Others uh, compete in triathlons and others just maintain a healthy lifestyle by just swimming like two or three times a week. So those are the three stages for every swimmer, comfort, movement, endurance, okay? What stage you're in, you know, ask yourself this question. Me, I'm in stage three, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> and what do I do in stage three? I just, uh, yeah, I just swim long distance and uh, yeah. Just do the work. Maintain a healthy, active lifestyle by swimming two or three times a week. That's what I do. And I teach as well. So there you go. Okay, now that you know the three stages of swimming, let's talk about methods. Okay, so there's more than one way to learn this sport. And a lot of you are not aware that there is more than one method. A lot of you are aware of the first method, which is traditional swimming lessons. Their job is to make as much money off a student as possible. And they do it by yeah, just hooking you in long term. 
okay, by making you sign up again and again. And I was the, I was a victim of this system, for many years. I spent a good chunk of my childhood in traditional swimming lessons. I had a terrible time with traditional lessons. I didn't like my classmates. I didn't like my instructor. I just was confused all the time by you know all these drills and exercises they were throwing at us, and just they just overloading. Us with so many components and things to pass in part as a part of a test. I would not recommend this method for most people. Okay, so there are three other methods that are out there, and I'm going to talk about them right now. So the second method, the complete opposite of traditional lessons, is private coaching. Okay, I am a private coach. I've taught clients from around the world, and、uh, I work one on one with them, and I'm like a doctor to them. You know, I fix. What's ailing them when it comes to swimming? You know the correction or ailments or whatever that they need to work on in particular, because they're frustrated with traditional lessons. They're not getting the results that they need. They're not getting the individual attention. And usually these obstacles are in either stage one, two, or three. You know I've worked with clients in all three stages, and they all have obstacles, hurdles that they they overcome. So in this case, private coaching is the way to go. If you really want to get instant results, but the cons to、uh, hiring a coach is it can be expensive. It requires a lot more、uh, focus and energy on the student, and you gotta really work on your your homework and self study in between sessions. It's not like you can work with the coach and then you just after an hour goes by you get instant results. No, it doesn't work like that. It, more, it works more like here's what you need to work on, or here's what the, I see as a coach that you need to fix or correct. And then you gotta spend your own time, on your own dime, in your own place, wherever you go to practice. And then we come back, and then we reassess, and then we work, keep going. Okay, so let's go on to the third method. Third method is self-guided learning. Now, this method was not available to me back when I started off as a kid on my swimming journey because there was no internet. No YouTube, no swimming tutorials online for me to study.、You、can search online, Google, YouTube, any kind of swimming tutorial that you need, and then you can just start watching and learning. But、uh, here's what I've noticed as a swim coach: I've seen a lot of just unverified content online. I see a lot of newbies and amateurs posting or posing as professional swimmers, and they're just they're giving the wrong information to people in general cuz anybody can make a video on youtube anybody can say anything and, and, and say this is how you swim it's unverified find information from a validated source a verified source how do you know what's verified and what's not verified well you got to go through testimonials you got to go through recommendations you got to see people who provide results for for other clients so let's talk about the last method And that is a online course, okay? Online learning. This is something. This is another option that was not available to me a long time ago. I wish it was. It would have saved me a ton of money. Okay, so an online course. What's different from an online course versus like self-guided learning online? Well, an online course is focused. It comes from one source. It comes from one teacher. It is a a lot faster than trying to scour the internet. For information on learning to swim, trying to piece together the, the journey that you don't know where you should take yourself. Great for people who are on the go, casual learners, people who don't really want to be professional swimmers, people who really want the best of both worlds. Actually, person who wants to learn from an expert and、uh, yeah, skip all that traditional lesson bullshit. Something that I wish I had growing up, because.、Uh, Yeah, I spent a lot of time. I wasted a lot of money on swimming lessons that got me nowhere. For me, my personal story was I enrolled in swimming lessons when I was a child for many years, and I got nowhere, nowhere from it. Okay,、uh, I had a daily routine: going to the pool two, three times a week, swimming lessons, and I enrolled in the same swimming levels again and again. We had colors back then, and I was always stuck in maroon level. Could never get past maroon and wasted a lot of time. Didn't get me results. So what happened was I stopped swimming. I quit swimming for a while, and then I started again, restarted it、uh, when I became a teenager, and I set my sights to, towards becoming a lifeguard because the complete opposite of a person who can swim is someone who can. So a lifeguard was a goal, an extreme goal for me, and I accomplished it. 
And how did I accomplish it? Well, it wasn't through method one, traditional lessons. It was through method number three, which was self-guided learning. Because method number two, I couldn't afford a swim coach because swim coaches are very expensive. I learned swimming on my own. I did trial and error. So what I did was I would go to the pool after school every day on my own, failing a lot, a lot of trial and error. It did take a while, but I did qualify to become like a lifeguard. Out of all of these methods, which one is right for you? Well, you got to decide, okay? It's up to you what kind of person you are and what you need. But if I had to start all over again, I would definitely choose the path of least resistance. I would choose the quickest path and the path that works best that gets me results, okay? And it's through an online course. If the was available to me back then but it's up to you okay so let us know what you think uh, what would you decide out of all four methods and what stage are you at in terms of swimming let us know in the comments down below and if you do need a course that will get you started swimming in 2020 sign up for mine seven day swim.co it's there for you okay all you have to do is just jump in that's all i have to say for now in this video and uh yeah subscribe if you haven't like this video, hit the notification bell, bing! I'll see you later. Okay, take care, bye-bye.